Hey there. <laughs> so I'm excited to be here. It's my first TV special. I've been doing a lot of writing to get ready. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Not just for this, though. I got another project on the go. I realized recently there's never been a sitcom about a guy like me. Yeah. A single broke guy. Living alone in a basement apartment. Well, it started out as a sitcom. Now it's developed into more of a suicide note. Coming along, though. <laughs> that joke's not entirely true, actually. I'm not single. I, I have a girlfriend. Yeah. She's got some weird sexual fetishes. Yeah, like one of her fantasies is for us to have sex in the kitchen while she's preparing food. <laughs> kind of conflicts with one of my fantasies, which is to have sex so good she wouldn't be able to simultaneously prepare food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know about the rest of you fellas here. I'd like to think when I'm bringing the thunder. <laughs> would be difficult to measure a level teaspoon of baking soda. So I'm looking to earn some extra money on the side. I've got a few ideas. One is to start counterfeiting quarters. Yeah. Because I've never had a cashier inspect my quarters. See if they were real. Plus, there's so many different designs on our quarters nowadays. I wouldn't even have to copy one. I could just make up my own. Most of the time, no one would notice. Then occasionally, someone might say, Wow, this quarter has a picture of two fat chicks breakdancing on it. <laughs> That's what would be on my quarter. So I was just watching a telethon for the Humane Society the other night. You know, they're kind of hypocritical. Because if they have two dogs which no one will adopt, they'll just kill both dogs. Yet if I want to adopt the same two dogs, stage a dog fight that would kill only one dog. <laughs> uh, apparently that's cruel. So I've been living in Toronto about five years now. One thing that bugs me about this city, I'll be walking around downtown, and I'll see a building with a giant video screen on it. On the same block, I'll see a homeless guy out in the street begging for change. You'd think with all our money, we'd be able to afford electric fences. <laughs> Restrict them to the alleyways. <laughs> One thing I do enjoy about living in Toronto, though, is our local news. So occasionally I'll see a story about a drunk guy who dies trying to pull some crazy stunt. Just once, though, I'd like to see a story about a drunk guy who survives. <laughs> yeah. A North York area man is in stable condition tonight after riding a shopping cart off his roof into a swimming pool. <laughs> One witness described the scene as awesome. <laughs> the only thing that bugs me about our local news is it's getting a bit too predictable. Like, they always lead off with a shooting story. 
Then at the end, they'll have one or two uplifting stories just to pick you up. Just once I'd appreciate it if they changed it up, though. A 17-year-old high school student is helping to remind people of how precious life is by shooting at them. <laughs> yeah, Toronto's mayor was just on the news recently talking about the gun violence. And he said we need harsher penalties for gun possession. Because if you have a gun, then you're eventually going to use it. Now, I'm all for harsher penalties, but I don't think just because you have something means you're going to use it. Because I have a bread maker. <laughs> yeah, I was watching the financial news the other day, and... I learned that Philip Morris, the tobacco company, also owns both Miller Breweries and Kraft Foods. This means that the same company is responsible for making beer, smokes, and Kraft dinner. Yeah. The government should just send them the welfare checks directly. Yeah, I watch a lot of that financial news. It's not that I have any money to invest. It's just because I'm Jewish. <laughs> I might see somebody I know. Yeah. yeah, a lot of Jews don't like those stereotypes. So they'll change their names to sound less Jewish. Not me. I'm going to change my name to sound more Jewish. <laughs> then I'm going to write a book called The Counting Tips. Yeah by Moses Stein Goldberg Steen. <laughs> A bitch. <laughs> I don't want to perpetuate that stereotype, though, that, that all Jews are bankers and accountants. Though a few of us are. My friend just had a bad experience with a Jewish banker, actually. He wanted to build a mall down on Queen Street. He went in for a loan. Now, I suggested he call it the Queen Street Mall, but he insisted on going with his original name, the Molocaust. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad he didn't get that loan. was going to donate 5% of the profits to an educational summer camp for kids with ADD, the concentration camp. <laughs> yeah, it's nice when people give back. So sometimes after a show, someone will come up to me and they'll ask me if I really talk like this. And I tell them that I do. Then usually they assume that I'm high all the time. <laughs> That's actually not it. I actually had a brain tumor when I was a kid. That plus I'm high all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not all bad having a brain tumor when you're a kid, though. When I was in the hospital, the Children's Wish Foundation came in to visit me. And I said, I don't know if you guys can really do this, but one day, I'd like to shame my parents on national television. <laughs> Tonight you're making that dream come true. Yeah. So I was watching the shopping channel the other day. You got to be careful when you buy stuff off of them. This one time I got a magic juicer. It came with a free magic slicer. Under the condition I tell a friend about the offer. 
Then a few months later, a guy came to my house to take back the magic slicer. He claimed that I'd broken the deal. I said I hadn't. I told Frank. He said he already talked to Frank. Frank doesn't really consider me a friend. What a way to find out. Yeah, another time I was watching the shopping channel and they were selling one of those electrolysis hair removal systems. They were comparing it to all the alternate methods of hair removal. They decided that waxing was the most painful, which surprised me, because I would have guessed chemotherapy. So I've been touring around a lot, and I just got back from Edmonton. And uh, I stopped in at that West Edmonton Mall. If you've never been there, you should go. Yeah. It's basically what it is. It's like a much larger version of every other mall you've ever been to in your life. It's got the same punk kids out front, holding their skateboards, smoking cigarettes, acting all tough. The next time you see these losers, here's what you can say to them. John needs his wallet back. <laughs> yeah. Just don't tell them I called them losers. <laughs> I was shopping for a gift for my grandpa when I was over there thinking of picking him up one of those world's greatest grandpa coffee mugs. Then I noticed they had four of them. Yeah, that forced me to question the credibility of this award. <laughs> yeah. So I made him a mug myself. It said, greatest grandpa regional qualifier. So I was doing some grocery shopping earlier today. I picked up some grapes. I accidentally got the kind with seeds in them. Yeah. Why do they still make those? <laughs> yeah. Unless you're buying grapes to plant more grapes. <laughs> Even then, I'd want to plant the seedless kind. really need some of those seedless grape seeds. Uh, yeah. yeah, those are my two main pet peeves, actually. Grape seeds and pedophilia. Yeah. But you know, we gotta look at the root causes with pedophilia. Eighty percent of sex offenders were themselves assaulted as children. Yeah, it's not enough to throw the pedophiles in prison. We've got to throw the victims in prison, too. Yeah. Not the same prison, obviously. Thank you. But the thing that really bugs me about pedophiles is they give normal child killers a bad name. Yeah. It's okay, I didn't expect a lot of support on it. Yeah. But you know, if you kidnap and then murder a child, people are just going to assume you're a pedophile. But there's lots of other reasons. Like, what if he looked at you wrong? Owes you money or something. That's why if I ever have to kill a kid, I'm doing it from a safe distance with a sniper rifle. Yeah. That way people will know I'm not some kind of sicko. <laughs> hey there. 
So I bought one of those robot vacuums. Yeah. It only cleans the center of the room because it's round. So, so the center of my apartment's really clean. All the corners are filthy. But at least if robot vacuums take over the world, I'll know where to hide. So I watch a lot of TV in my spare time, as I mentioned earlier. It's uh, not that I really enjoy TV, just because I'm too lazy to do anything else. Yeah, if I could, I'd just sit on my couch and stare at the walls. But if you do that, people start to worry about you. Yeah. TV's just a box that goes between me and the wall. Keep me from looking insane. Yeah, one thing that bugs me about TV is it makes our kids too materialistic. Like, when I was a kid, I thought I really needed a Batmobile. But my folks would never buy me one. So I stole my sister's Barbie car. She at the time was a pink Corvette. I painted it black and used that as my Batmobile. But I feel sorry for the kids of today. Because the new Barbie car is a pink Beetle. Yeah. No matter what color you paint a beetle, could never be cool enough for Batman. <laughs> Batman and Robin will ride around in it. Robin will say, Batman, why are we in this beetle? <laughs> Batman will say, well, Robin, it's sporty, <laughs> yet fuel efficient. <laughs> With the highest safety rating in its class, Robin will say, Batman, are we gay? <laughs> no, Robin, now let's get back to the Malibu Dream Cave. <laughs> yeah, another thing that bugs me about TV is those public service announcements. I saw one the other day, it said one in five Canadians suffer from depression, and most of them suffer in silence. I think that's really for the best. <laughs> yeah, the ads that really bug me, though, are the ones telling kids not to do drugs. Because TV shouldn't be lecturing kids about drugs. That's for their parents to do. I remember the first talk my mom gave me. She said, John, I'm not always going to be around to watch you. So if you decide to take drugs, leave the money on my dresser. <laughs> it's not true, of course. Never bought drugs off my mom. Was what I said in court. <laughs> but the thing that really bugs me about these anti-drug ads is they never warn you of the real consequences. Like if I were to make one of those ads, it would say, don't smoke too much weed because it can impair your ability to communicate. <laughs> I'll give you an example. The other night I came home, my roommate was watching the Discovery Channel. He said, hey, John, did you know that camels can go up to four months without any drinking water? Now, I was going to say I never knew that. Then I realized I'm a big pothead. <laughs> it's quite possible I did know that at some point. <laughs> yeah, so I substituted the phrase, I don't recall hearing of this in the past. That made it sound like I was blaming him for withholding important information.
One drug I had to give up, though, was the acid. So I always have frightening hallucinations. This one time I was looking through my closet. I thought I saw two dead children hanging from hooks. That really freaked me out. Then I realized it was just the mirror next to one dead child. What a relief. But apparently there's these frogs in Australia that'll make you hallucinate if you lick them. Mm. I'm pretty sure we have animals right here in Canada that'll make you hallucinate. We just don't know, because we haven't licked them yet. If I ever get close enough to a grizzly, though, I'm giving it a shot. Thank you.